Squatch, squatch, tell me where you at. Your motivation guy is back. Your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Man, I'm here to bring you guys the latest and greatest tips and tricks to make you like the best Fortnite player you can possibly be. But do you believe it? You got to believe it if you're going to achieve it. Remember that. Today, we're going to be talking about creative. In fact, we're going to be showing you our recommendations for creative modes that you need to start grinding like right now if you aren't already. Do this and you're going to become closer to becoming a faster, smarter, and overall more mechanically competent player. But before we get started, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get my favorite candy what is that y'all it's that bunch of crunch yo let's get this going all right, so let's start off with the good old familiar friend, shall we? The Pit is a build-heavy creative mode to try out. You know, unlike some of the other modes we'll talk about later, this mode won't require you to survive a storm circle. In the Pit, you have a good choice of weapons that you want to try out, you know, some from previous metas as well as some that might be in the current meta. However, the point of the Pit is to constantly be fighting enemies as well as having a more free build-like experience. And after dying, you're going to be able to spawn back and uh, pretty fast, so you can just get right back into the game. So the Pit has a variety of different weapons, to take your pick from. If you just want to have fun with it and just chill, you can do that. However, if you want to take it seriously, guys, and start really experimenting with a few new tricks, then you're going to be happy to know that you can do that here as well. There are infinite building materials, so go wild. You know, one skill that you need to learn is how to handle getting third party. In Arena, you might get yourself into a fight with another player only to get third party during or immediately after your fight. Perhaps it was the sound of gunshots that attracted an opponent or perhaps they simply just saw your bills from a distance, right? So getting third party in the pit is a common occurrence. I mean, everybody is in the same area and the only thing separating players is the bills that you place down, right? So you need to learn, guys, to use this mode to really just keep an eye on everything going on around you and not get distracted by the opponent that you're currently fighting with. You know, with players also dropping down from above, having the high ground isn't always the answer to everything. You know, this is why you need to also learn how to quickly just snap back and just fire an opponent that lands directly behind you. So practice those 360 spins and don't let them catch you guys by surprise. You know, consider tweaking your sensitivity settings if you feel like, you know, you're just turning around too slow. Let me ask you this, man. You guys need help training to become the best? Well, we got you covered. Click on the link below and visit ProGuides.com today. There, you're going to be able to connect with a variety of different pros who are willing to help you guys become the best that you can be. This is the same level of coaching pros get to indulge in. No matter what skill level that you are, when you come in, you are bound to learn something new that can help you surpass your current skills. All right, guys, so the next mode on this list is the 1v1. The 1v1 is a great way to practice fighting, right? But, you know, unlike modes where you have to deal with multiple opponents at once, you're going to be dealing with just one opponent. And so while this does train you to become a better fighter, it also is just much easier for you guys to train specific editing techniques and retakes. You know, we always talk about how 1v1s are good to train fighting, but you also need to know how to process the information and the kind of players you need to go up against. And so we recommend always trying to find somebody stronger than you to train with. Now, we don't mean like doing 1v1s with someone who has been playing the game forever. Getting stumped out like every single time, it's just not good for motivation and it might really cause you to burn out. And so if you're really trying to learn how to lift weights, you don't really start with the largest, right? Instead, you gradually work your way up. And so, do you have a friend who is better at Fortnite than you? Well, just ask them to 1v1 you. You know, you might get stomped out at first, but as you play, you can just learn to read that player's play style. Eventually, you're going to just notice that you can predict some of their movements because you've seen this particular technique before. And eventually, by learning from your mistakes, you're going to be able to surpass your training partner. And from there, seek out stronger opponents, right? Learn to read their play styles. And most importantly, don't get too comfortable fighting only one person. And so like Battle Royale, you should be playing against unique players with different techniques. The more exposure you get to new strategies, the more material you're going to have to keep learning. You know, 2v2 share a similar concept to 1v1s. Like, the whole point is to train you to fight, right? However, because of the extra players involved in it, you know, it just acts as a way for you and a teammate to really practice together, learn together, and really work on your chemistry. 2v2s are a great segue into team gaming and even applying roles to yourself without even having to commit to a whole team. In fact, you know, this is also just a good way of really training with an extra set of eyes to really point things out. And so if you go on creative, just make sure to really come here if you guys want to try out tackling other teams with two minds working together. All right, so because of the two-player format of this mode, some roles that you can use for this are Fragger and IGL. You know, you also want to make sure to keep close with your teammate during the fight because you're going to be dealing with another team rather than just one player. It's just a good trust-building exercise. You can just let your teammate handle the task while you focus on the other. Also, make sure to have a clear line of communication. And so if you have a mic, use it. Practice just giving each other information and sticking only to the most important details. This will, in turn, help you become a better teammate for anybody that you might eventually play with during a real tournament. 
All right, so death runs aren't always spoken about. After all, like, you know, the most you do here is just run in one direction and just try to dodge obstacles. So you aren't building and you aren't fighting. But death runs do have a good use, and that's really to train your reflexes and reaction time. You know, many edits rely on you being able to land in a good position or an exact location after a jump, right? So you might also need to place an edit down quickly. So your brain needs to be in tip top shape, you know, receiving situational information and reaching to it in an instant, right? And so the better you become at this, the more chances you have of making it come back after your opponent executes a good play. You know, the obstacles themselves are good to really test your reaction time. You know, the longer you go without getting killed means that your brain is adapting to the constant changes happening around you. You anticipate the danger and you react quickly to avoid it. All right, so Zone Wars is possibly some of the most intense fighting that you're gonna get to experience on creative. Like if you've never tried practicing for in game, then odds are that you're gonna get eliminated rather quickly. And so Zone Wars is all about being able to really outbuild your opponents, right? Using your opponents for resources and trying to keep yourself from getting boxed in. With the constant pressure of a moving circle, Zone Wars is gonna help you refine your tarping skills as you fight to stay within the zone. Here, and I mean like right here, you need to make sure like you make the most of your edits. So just, you know, just you gotta freshen up right and just your building and edit mechanics have to be top notch before dropping in if you can't build then use free building and edit courses to learn new techniques you also want to use zone wars to learn how to take high ground understand guys how layers work and the benefits of being on top will help you keep track of enemies around you but also just give you that extra safety net of not having players drop down on you and so we mentioned earlier how you need to constantly be looking for better players than you if you guys want to improve zone wars offers you a more diverse crowd of players to really go up against this is more accurate to Battle Royale. You know, in Battle Royale, you won't know if an opponent is better or worse than you because of this, like, you need to analyze your opponent's play style as you fight them, right? And so this way, you can pinpoint their weaknesses and exploit them, even if you play Arena and you've reached the Champions League where most other players just worked hard and gained experience to be there, skill levels will still vary, only now, it just gets more difficult to really determine the gap between you and them. And so this means just because the last opponent went down easy, it doesn't mean that the next one is. And so you always need to be prepared and not let your guard down. All right, let me say this, man. Don't forget to visit ProGuys.com to learn how Fortnite coaches can help you step up your game. Whether you need help fighting or learning your new mechanics, we got you covered. Finally, if you're looking to train your mechanics, then the go-to modes are actually the community-made ones. Out of all the community main maps, nothing helps you better at learning specific sets than rated 464 maps. There are such a variety of these maps available to you just a code away. And so they are essentially simulations that force you to practice a single edit over and over again to really meet your objective. And so it's specifically created so that, you know, if you get the edit wrong, you're going to stumble in your tracks, right? Meanwhile, getting the edit done correctly is going to help you progress. Aim training is also available with rated 464. Instead of just making an edit, you can instead just be challenged by being asked to hit a target repeatedly. This will train your ability to keep your crosshairs on an opponent as well as getting it to land where you want it to. So this can help you get better at headshots and become overall more accurate. You know, sometimes you're gonna even be able to combine both training types with some maps, requiring you to really perform an edit, create a peak, and really hit the target immediately after. This skill is essential if you wanna succeed in competitive Fortnite. But you guys tell me where you at, your motivation guy is back. Hope you guys liked the video. Subscribe to the channel and uh, make sure to connect with me on my Instagram at your motivation guy. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you like to also feel free to leave a comment and let us know if there is anything that you would be interested in learning more about. Remember, creative is the greatest training tool to master your mechanics. Once you feel confident, just start using those newfound skills in arena and then you can learn to use them during a real match. Hey, keep it going. Stay grinding. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.